A big thank you to all of you who like, comment, subscribe and share my videos or through other means support this channel. You are what makes this channel grow and become a resource for other people to learn from. Enough about how awesome you are, back to the video. Welcome back. It is the first Tuesday of the month and that means we have a new rotation from Epic on the marketplace. Now this month we are going to get a ultimate chip pack, the immersive template, museum environment kit, Venice Fast Building and Corals. So all of these five assets we're going to be checking out and as always if you want to get these you have to get them before the next uh, month's first Tuesday and you can find them under free section for free for the month. So let's check these assets out. So first out we have the ship pack. Now this pack is using a pulse process to give it a sort of grainy look. I'm not entirely sure why they chose this. Uh, so I'll be just turning that off. Uh, as a result, however, you can see that our pretty watery waves are going to be affected as well. Uh, that's also something that's handled in the post process volume, but I feel like this is a little bit clearer to see what kind of assets we are actually getting here inside of this pack. Now, this pack is essentially a bunch of different assets related to a pirate ship. As you could see here, we have the Jolly Roger. Uh, so you can see you have muskets, uh, fl flintlock guns, coins, chests, uh, rope. Not entirely sure what these are uh, called in, in English, but we're, we will just be calling them rope. Uh, chains and cannonballs and all kinds of things that you might want to have in relation to a pirate ship. So it's all good quality. It looks really nice. It's very coherent. Uh, I'm just a little bit weirded out by why they chose to have this post-process volume to give this grainy look. but. Uh, overall, if uh, pirate ship is something you need for your projects, or uh, maybe as a backdrop, or maybe you want to make a sailor's life kind of a sim, who knows, this might be the pack for you. Next up we have the museum environment kit. And this, you can see here, this is the overview map, so we can see all the different pieces that make up the scene that we're going to be looking at in a little moment. So you can see that there are not that many different things that comprise the whole scene. Uh, but it will look pretty nice even though it's fairly small. So here we are inside of the museum itself. Now uh, originally this asset had a little bit of a dark lighting so I upped up the lighting a little bit to make it a little bit clearer what we can actually see in here. But essentially we have a whole bunch of different artworks lining the walls inside of this museum. Let's get rid of the small parts like that. Uh, so you see lots of different paintings here of all kinds of different things. And this museum um, exhibit or ex museum building so to speak is just a very small building. It is two stories where there are paintings and some small meshes and uh, details around everywhere to fill the space and create a cohesive look. And yeah, that's essentially it. If we go outside, you can see that this is essentially all that has been constructed to give this museum its look and feel. So if a museum is something that you need for your product, this might be a good fit. Next up we have the Venice Fast Building Asset Pack. Now this asset pack is, a, as you can see, it's a environment that portrays a similar vibe to Venice, its canals and gondolas. And um, yeah, so that's essentially what you're getting here with a little bit of a caveat. So. The terrain itself, you can see that the environment is, is lending this look of, of Venice. Um, but there is a little bit more to it. These buildings are uh, blueprints, so they have a bunch of configuration available to them that you can affect. Um, so you have the ability to change values on these two uh, get different effects here but I was playing around with the different values 
and I have not been able to change any of them so I'm not entirely sure what kind of parameters are actually uh, well I, I could change this one you can see uh, but they seem to be some sort of limitation and I haven't delved into the blueprint uh, code itself to see what is actually going on here so uh, you do have some parameters here but they might not be super straightforward uh, but they are however uh, blueprints that you can make use of and you see they have a folder here for blueprints that they have for different categories like buildings bridges brick fences and things like that which would lend you the idea idea that uh, this could possibly be used to procedurally generate a environment fairly quickly uh, not entirely sure if this one was set up in such a way it could be because it looks a little bit sloppy you can see that there are buildings that are going inside of other buildings and this is a fairly common occurrence all around uh, but this is of course something you could solve by um, making sure that your procedural code uh, gives some space to the buildings nearby so it doesn't happen but uh, yeah so so this might be an interesting starting place if the the theme is something you're after or you want to have buildings that are like at least semi uh, modular and and blueprint exposed so that you can like get variation for buildings easily without having to manually uh, build them yourself at least uh, unless that's something you want to do of course you can go you can then go down and uh, on a modular level and just put in pieces to create the houses that you want to have in your scene right Next up we have the coral pack and this feels, well, rather niche, I guess. Um, you have about, or it should be exactly, 79 different meshes for coral, uh, which is great, I guess, if you're doing an underwater scene to make sure that it's not that repetitive. Uh, but by itself, it doesn't lend itself as very well presented because I don't know, even this demonstration level doesn't look that uh, appealing in my opinion. So that's uh, maybe a little bit an over oversight perhaps, but yeah, yeah, if this is something that you're looking for and something you're after, uh, maybe this is of interest. We can go and look at the actual assets themselves so you can see that these are all the different assets that you are getting inside of this pack. So you see there are some variations in size, colors, and formations for all of these different assets. Lastly, we have the immersive templates. And I'm a little bit torn on this one. Uh, let's just start off with demonstrating how what this is all about. So uh, this is a template that allows you to walk up to objects and interact with them. So you can press E and it will pick up the mug and you can see that it is sort of trying to use inverse kinematics to adjust its height depending on where an object is. So this is an object that's fairly low, so the character will sort of bend down to place it down. And you can see that it will sort of place its hand where the, the cup is when it picks it up. When it puts it back, however, you can see that it does not look that great. And I'm not entirely sure if... Uh, that's just an issue with this version or if this is how it is in every version but it looks janky anyway um, with the cup in hand you can see that you have a contextual interaction with it so you can use the one key to drink with it or you can press two to just drop it on the floor if you want to um, equally you have something uh, like the box over here you can reach up and grab it the problem is that if you were to place it back again, it just breaks and you can no longer interact with the box again. Not entirely sure what this is, I would have to delve into the code more to see what the actual problem is. But you can also interact with uh, chairs to sit down and stand up again if you want to. So you have a generic interaction system sort of in place, which is uh, nice of course. Uh, lastly, let's show off over here, we can pick up a keycard. 
and we can walk up to this door and if we have the key card in hand it opens up the door and we can come in here in here we can place the card on the floor if we want to to pick up this torch and if we pick up the torch we can light or extinguish it if we want to and we can place it on the pillar over here and yeah, then we have a staircase over here for funsies i guess um anyway so so that's the whole demo of the whole thing and the concept of uh, having a character reach to certain locations depending on where it is placed is nice uh, it, it gives a more immersive feel than just having the same um, animation playing that picks up any object regardless if it's on the floor or on a shelf or anywhere right uh, the issues I have with this is that it's a bit rough around the edges. Uh, if we were to pick up the cup here again, for example, we can... Actually, let's... That's not what I wanted to do. Let's actually do this in another order. So I go over here and I uh, pick up the box and I place it over here. It is now broken forever and can never be interacted with. The cup, however, we can move over here. We're placing it up here. It is fairly clear that something is wrong with the setup here, to me. Um, so rough around the edges is how I'm going to be describing this. Uh, but it is probably, if it's a bit polished and fixed, it's it's much better than just having the same animation for picking and picking up things, right? So that's the good part. Um, the next part comes from the code itself. I've been looking a little bit into the code and I am not super impressed by it. Um, it is partially commented, as you can see here. There are some comments here and there for some orientations and things like that and colors and such. But you can also see that there are large portions that are not commented. Um, maybe you would want to feel like that the comments are not necessarily if, if the code is self-descriptive enough through the naming conventions of its uh, uh, variables and such and that is a valid point um, but looking into this you can see that the logic is a bit weird for example opening the door it checks against to see how many key cards you have in accordance to a key card requirement that just means that any key card would work for any door right there's not not like a specific lock and key kind of a system and I don't know, I, I I just don't like that, I guess. It feels a bit hacky. Um, so, so the code itself, as far as I have seen, is not fantastic. And the naming conventions and such things, I'm not super impressed with either. So overall, I would say that the blueprints itself are, are not great. The concept of the inverse kinematics to reach objects from different levels or different positions is nice uh, and something that can be usable but i would say that if you're going to make use of this for your game it probably needs a, a fair amount of polish to make it work unless i'm happening happening to be in a situation where it's um acting up in a situation that is not uh, consistent with uh, maybe other versions or something like that so there are some goods and some bads with this, however, but uh, it's not something that's great out of the box, I would say. N not from what I've seen so far, anyway. Anyway, that is all the assets that we will be looking at today. Uh, I hope that this was useful to you, maybe gave you some insight into how the things work and if you saw something that was interesting to you. So make sure to pick it up before the next rotation next month. Anyway, that's going to be all for now. Keep on learning. Take care. Hopefully you found this video helpful. If you liked the video, leave a like. If you did not like it, leave a dislike. Leave any suggestions or comments you have down below. Subscribe and share this video if you want to see more like it in the future. That is all for now. Keep on learning. Take care.